Hi everyone. So today we're going to learn a little bit about the vocabulary and parts of a circle that you may not have seen before or you didn't know how to name those parts of the circle. So over here on the left we have the vocabulary bank, the actual words themselves, and then here are the notations for them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the different types of arcs that you might see. Okay, now an arc is along the circumference of a circle, and we have three different kinds. The first one is a minor arc, or a major arc, sorry. Major arc is going to be an arc that is bigger than 180, but less than 360 degrees, so more than half the circle. Okay, so in this case, a good example of a major arc would be arc A, D, B. Or another example, um, the one that's actually over here in the notation bank, they, it's the same arc, but they use three different letters, A, F, B. So it's a very good example of a minor arc. So the table below is where you're going to put your notes and where the definitions are. So for instance, major arc, definition of that one would be right here. The larger <coughs> of the two arcs formed when a circle is divided into two unequal pieces. So that is our major arc. And the example that we were just looking at was arc AFB. Notice that with major arcs, we use three letters to name. That's important. So if you only ever see two letters, it's not talking about a major arc. It's talking about a minor arc. Okay? So that was our example of a major arc. Now let's talk about what a minor arc looks like. I'm color coding it to make it a little bit easier to see. So an example that they gave on here was AF. So, AF is from here to here. It is less than half the circle. So that's what makes it a major arc, and we use two letters to name it. AF is one. Another good example is GB. Okay, GB is right here. Another minor arc, something less than half the circle. Okay? And once again, we only use two letters to name it instead of three. So let's go down to the definition down here at the bottom. So it is the smaller of two arcs formed when a circle is divided into two equal parts. And once again, that was called a minor arc. <clears throat> and I think it is important to add that we use two letters to name it. So like in this one, it was arc GB. <clears throat> and the last type of arc is what if it's exactly half the circle, okay? If it's exactly half the circle, that's going to be called a semicircle, right here. And on our picture, and you can see it over here, BFD, B, F, D, you'll notice it. We use three letters to name a semicircle, half a circle. Now, how do you know it's exactly half of a circle? Because the endpoints, B and D, are endpoints of the diameter as well that goes through the center of the circle. So if they are endpoints of the diameter, then it is half of a circle, a semicircle. The definition is down here. An arc whose endpoints lie on the diameter. The word was semicircle. And we also use three letters to name a semicircle as well. And this one was BFD. All right, so those are our three types of arcs. Next up is what is a chord and a diameter? So I'm going to erase this real quick. And I'm going to use the highlight tool once again to talk about a chord. So a chord is any segment in the circle. So it could be a diameter, but it doesn't have to be. Like for instance, AF right here. It is a line segment that has two endpoints that are on the circle. BD is a diameter, but 
it is also a chord, a type of chord, okay? GC is not a chord because C is not on the circle itself. It's the center, okay? So that example was AF, and then the diameter is right here. And the diameter is a chord, but it has to go through the center specifically, cutting the circle in half. Okay, so BD is an example of that. So let's go ahead and write those vocabulary words down. So right here we have a segment whose endpoints um, on the circle and that passes through the center. That's important. Passes through the center. That would be our diameter. And in this case, it was BD. And then the one below it, a segment whose endpoints lie on a circle. So it's still a segment, but it doesn't have to go through the center like the diameter, and that was called a chord. And our example was AF. Right here. This one's a chord. Technically, they're both chords, but only BD is the diameter. All right, so the center is the point that is equal distances from every point on the circle, so right smack dab in the middle, so that would be C. So that would be right here. And we just use one letter to name points. So it would be C. So it's actually right below there, you can see it. It's the point inside a circle that is equidistant from all points on the circle. And we just use one letter, C. Almost done. The last two we're talking about are angles. We have an inscribed angle and a central angle. Now the word central kind of gives it away because the vertex of your angle has to be at the center. So an example of that, <clears throat> Take a different color real quick. An example of a central angle would be angle GCB. GCB. Because the vertex of that angle is at the center. So an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle otherwise known as a central angle. The word central kind of gives it away, central angle. And the central angle of this one was angle GCB. And the very last one that we're gonna look at is an inscribed angle. So obviously it's gonna be our last angle here, angle GDB. So G, D, B. You can see that the vertex actually lies on the circle itself, as well as the endpoints. Really, an inscribed angle is just made up of two chords. G, D is a chord, and B, D is also a chord. And those two chords intersect on the circle, creating an inscribed angle. So let's go down and finish our definition. It was angle G, D, B on our picture, and remember that it is an angle whose vertex is on a circle, and the sides contain chords. And it was called an inscribed angle. Remember, if you get stuck on any future assignments, you can always go back and watch this video if you forget what some of the vocabulary words mean or how to name them. Okay, now would be a good time if you have a camera, you could take a picture of this. You should have been writing this down in your notes, but if you didn't, then go ahead and take a picture. Now would be a good time. Thanks for watching and have a great day, guys. I remembered one more thing, guys, before we end is that let's do a little bit of practice. So looking at this picture, I'd like you to pause it and try and answer these questions, one through eight. All right, guys, so hopefully you have paused it and tried these. Um, so a radius 
remember, is not all the way through a circle, okay? So an example of a radius might be BE, or it could be BC, or it could be BA. It's not all the way through the center. Remember, it's only halfway, okay? So an exa examples of those would be BE, or you could have put BC, or you could have put AB. A chord. Now remember, a chord has to have endpoints on the circle itself. So for instance, the diameter is a chord. BD is also a chord. And DE, not the whole line, just from D to E is also a chord. So there are three different chords. AC, DC, not the band, ACDC, and DE. Okay, uh, the diameter, there was only one diameter, we talked about it a second ago, and that was AC. Remember, the diameter has to go through the center. A minor arc, there are lots of different minor arcs, remember, it just has to be less than the circle, so a good example would be DE. And remember, you make an arc symbol on top. AD is another good example. Or EC. Now I'm going to put dot, 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 because there are other examples of minor arcs. Major arcs, an arc bigger than half the circle. So a, a good example of that would be ACE. And remember, we use three letters to name a major arc. A semicircle, exactly half the circle. So you have to remember that you start at the endpoints of the diameter. So if this is our diameter, we need to start at A and go all the way around to C. But I'm going to go the other way because we need three letters to name a semicircle. So in this case, A is the beginning letter. And I could use D or E as the middle letter. And C is the last letter. Lastly, central and inscribed angles. Remember, a central angle has to have the center um, as its vertex. So A, B, C, as well as A, B, E is also a central angle. And last one is the inscribed angle. Remember, the vertex has to be on the circle itself. So an example would be A, C, D. Another one would be C, D, E. Either of those would be correct. So check your work. See if that's correct. If you have any questions, make sure to ask your teacher, okay? Have a great day, guys.